This will be a brief overview of the various nibs we might use in the course, the reservoirs on those nibs, and how we can make adjustments in those reservoirs to control the flow of ink from the nib. Here are the nibs I might recommend to you use in the course. The first one is the browse nib, and as you can see, the reservoir is on the top of the nib. It's a very good nib. The second one is the tape nib. It's also like the browse nib in that the reservoir is at the top. Next is the speedball nib. Here too, you have a reservoir at the top of that. Next, you have the Mitchell nib. And underside of the Mitchell nib, there's a reservoir. We'll talk about that. Lastly, there's a Mitchell nib with a homemade reservoir on it, which we'll talk about also. The browse nib is cut at a slight angle so that it might be more comfortable for some right-handers. Trying the various nibs will help you decide which one works best for you. The reservoir sits atop the nib and holds onto it with two little clips that wrap around the sides onto the bottom. These can be adjusted. Later in the video, I will show you exactly how to do this and why. This is the view from the underside of the nib. The reservoir on the tape nib works exactly the same as that on the browser. That is, you can slide it towards the tip of the nib to make it more free-flowing, or slide it towards the pen handle and give it a stingier flow. I find the main difference between the browser nib and the tape nib is that the browser nib gives a finer line. It's a little more dependable. Tape nibs are a little less expensive. From the underside of the tape nib, you can see how the clips hold the reservoir onto the nib. The reservoir on the speedball nib, although it resides at the top of the nib, is unlike the reservoirs on the browse or tape in that you can't adjust it. It is where it is and it stays put. Usually it works quite well. We'll have a discussion about that later. The first difference you'll notice between the Mitchell nib and the three previous ones are that the Mitchell nib is a square cut. Once again, experience with these various nibs will let you know which one you will prefer. So you have the square cut versus the right-handed cut, first of all, and then you'll notice that the reservoir is not on the top of the Mitchell nib. It's on the bottom. So this reservoir, like the other reservoirs, are attached to the nib by two little clips clinging to the side. And this reservoir, like the others, can be moved forward towards the nib, which will give you a freer flow, or backwards towards the pen handle, which will give you a stingier flow. I'll be demonstrating this in the video to come. And this is what the reservoir looks like on the underside of the Mitchell nib. This is the same type of Mitchell nib you just saw, square cut, but one major difference is that it has a homemade reservoir on it. I have a video that I'll show you how to make this in if you prefer. The wire is simply a very fine grade of jeweler's wire and uh, it's quite easy to make. This is the underside of the Mitchell nib with homemade reservoir. You can see the coil shape. The brows, the speedball, and the Mitchell nibs all come also with a left-handed cut that some left-handers will prefer. Once again, experience will let you know what feels best for you. Some left-handers will prefer these, some will prefer a square cut nib, some will actually prefer a right-handed cut nib. Try them all. You'll find what works best for you individually. Here we have the browse nib. The reservoir in it sits atop, and it's held by these little pinchers, these little things, arms wrapped around the sides. And so, for us to move this reservoir back and forth, it's best to take your thumbnail and try to press it that way, and it's very difficult to move most of the time. Sometimes you may want to take a blade of some sort and scoot it up. I just did it with my thumbnail right there and as you can see I got it closer to the end of the nib. The closer you get any reservoir 
to the tip of the nib, the more free-flowing the ink is going to be. The function of the reservoir is to hold a bead of ink between the reservoir and the nib. So the closer you bring that bead of ink up to the tip of the nib, the more free-flowing it's going to be. If you pull the reservoir back towards the pen handle and make a greater and greater distance between the reservoir and the end of the nib, the stingier the flow is going to be. And so you're going to try to determine what that flow is going to be through trial and error. That is moving that reservoir back and forth. So on the browse and nib, you'll have to use your thumbnail or something, like a blade of a knife or scissors, to encourage that towards the tip of the nib or back towards the pen handle. That's the browse and nib. The tape nib is virtually a clone of the Browsa. It does exactly the same thing. Uh, I feel that the uh, quality of the Browsa nibs are better than the quality of the tape nibs, and so I generally wouldn't use these. But the reservoir here does the same thing. You can push it back, in which case it draws the bead of ink, closer towards the pen handle. It's going to be a stingier flow. And then you can also push it forward some. This one is a little bit easier control than the Browse and Nib was uh, reservoir. And so, generally speaking, on either the Browse or the Tape Nibs, you want the tip of the reservoir almost to the very end. That's what I found works best most of the time. So there's the brows and the tape, and now that brings us to the Mitchell nibs. And you can see right here the difference with the Mitchell nib is that the reservoir doesn't reside on the top of the nib, but resides on the underside. And so you have the little prongs wrapped around the shoulders towards the top. So here, what you're going to want to do to adjust that is you're going to want to push that reservoir backwards or forwards to adjust where that bead of ink is going to be held between the reservoir and the nib. Now the thing about this Mitchell nib is, the reservoir for it is, it does not come with the nib. The uh, tape nib, the browser nib, the reservoirs came attached to the nibs. The Mitchell nib comes with a reservoir that's not attached. Often you have to buy the reservoirs separately. The thing about these reservoirs too with the uh, uh, Mitchell nibs is that they're very flexible and they're made to be flexible so you can push this up or push it down to some degree. And the more you push it up, the more contact it's going to be making with the underside of that Mitchell nib. So, as I slide this on, and it's a little contrary at first doing it, but it does, it slides on, then you would like to make sure, if possible, that that reservoir is making contact. And it doesn't have to make real harsh contact, but just some contact with the tip of the underside of the nib. And that's how the reservoir works for the Mitchell nib. And then you have the speedball nib. And the speedball comes with a reservoir attached to it that doesn't move. And so um, you just have to use it as is. It's usually pretty good. Uh, speedball nibs, I find, are pretty good quality in the larger sizes. When they get down to the maybe the two smallest sizes, uh, they vary in quality control, but um, we won't use those very much. We'll just be using, through the course of the year, a couple of the larger sizes of the Broad Edge um, Mitchells. Uh, another reservoir I did want to show you is this on the Mitchell nib. It's a homemade reservoir, and uh, it's something that I make and put on my Mitchell nibs. Uh, and... Uh, 
I have a video on it. I'll give you the uh, link to it. It's very easy to make. You just use uh, the thinnest gauge jewelry wire, and it's uh, quite easy to do. So uh, if you would like to try your hand at that, that's good too. A good nib or pen that you can use to begin learning broad edge lettering is the parallel pen. Uh, it is unlike the other nibs that we were looking at in that it's actually two pieces of metal as we come closer up to that maybe we can see this it's two different metal plates that uh, actually come together and um, the ink comes out the little teeth at the end of this um, this is a good nib so long as you don't have to do any kind of pressurizing uh, if you have to do any pressurizing, those metal plates do not splay. All of the other broad edge nibs you saw have a slit in the middle, and so they will splay apart when you want to do pressurized lettering, which is in our future. So uh, the most basic primary letter forms done with broad edge, uh, you can do with this, and it'd be fine to do the basic Romans with, if you wished. You'll do yourself a favor, though, in getting to the uh, nibs that you need to dip into ink or gouache uh, sooner than later. Uh, you can fill this with various writing fluids, and I do have <laughs> a video for that, and I'll give you the link for that as well. So, here you go.